Hello and welcome back to LCA TV. We've managed to track down Leonard Putarin, um, who is, I guess, most well known at the moment for uh, System D, previously Pulse Audio stuff as well. Um, you've been giving a, a couple of talks here, Leonard, on System D. Just one. Just one. Um, uh, can you tell us what is System D? Um, system D started out as an init system. Like an init system is this thing that that you boot that boots up your system basically mm -hmm. and starts services and, and file system checks everything and things like that. Um, but nowadays we consider it more as a, as a set of basic building blocks to build an operating system from. So it includes more than just an init system, it also includes a couple of, of uh, tools that you need um, that are auxiliary to, to bringing up the system and maintaining the system and provides basic APIs to, to applications for, for really basic stuff like, like what do we need in all the systems. Um, previously all of that was, was done um, in System 5 in it and, yes. and a couple of distribution specific scripts and, and things like that. Um, so with SystemD we try to, to unify, unify all that a bit and so, so that everyone can use the same stuff there and that not everything is, has to be written in shell and that it's, it's kind of, yeah, more, feels more like a real operating system in the end than, <laughs> rather than just the, the bunch of uh, shell scripts that are glued so there's, together. there's a couple of options these days. Obviously Upstart is another one for dependency-based booting and things like that. Um, well, actually no, no, it doesn't do dependency-based booting, but yeah, it's an option. So how do they compare? Oh, yeah, well, I, mean, I, I want to be friendly to the Upstart guys, so... Uh, <laughs> um, well, in many ways, so, so Upstart is a lot more minimal than SystemD, right? Like, like already from the beginning it's just an init system while we try to be this build, the set of basic building blocks. Um, but uh, conceptually, um, like the reason why we started SystemD is because we actually believe that the Upstart design, the basic design, was not the right um, design to have. Um, like, I, I can probably talk for hours about that, but um, just to, to completely superficial expl superficially explain that, um, Upstart, when it makes decisions what to start at boot up, kind of expects that uh, the administrator told it in advance exactly what it's supposed to do. While in SystemD, um, you, you tell it just, um, yeah, these are the dependencies of things, and then at boot time it figures out what it actually should be. A starting of that, or, or to explain it in a different way, what what system D stores is the formula mm. that at boot time the formula can still be modified and the the result can be calculated, while upstart only stores the result. Right. So um, this has effects on a couple of things, like like for example, upstart tries to maximize what it can start at boot up, right? Like if it sees an event, it will start it regardless, of, like restart services based on that, regardless if they're actually needed. Mm -hmm. System D, on the other hand, has this dependency tree um, thing in there, so it will only, like it knows where it wants to go to, and will start exactly what's needed for that, but not more. Right. So uh, it's a conceptually different thing. Like, like it, it results in a couple of other things. Like, for example, in system D, you can always figure out exactly why it did what it did and what it will do the next time. Right? right. You can you, because you see the dependency graph, and, and and much like it would be with a package manager, where you can figure out the dependencies with the package, um, you can figure out the dependency with the service, and you could could just by hand draw exactly. Okay, this is going to to, to be pulled in by that, and that is by being pulled pulled in by that. Okay. Whereas also that system more difficult because what AppSet requires is that, that all the basic stuff is, 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 is already expressed like that it says, yeah, this is what you do. So um, for me personally, I think AppSet is in a, in a way nice, it has nice source code and the idea is very, very simple. Um, and so so it's, it's a simplicity, certainly uh, system is mu mu much more complex in that right. regard. But then again, I believe it's too simple, right? It, because it, it puts the, 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 the burden of making this calculation of this formula that I mentioned, mm. um, it puts that on the administrator developer, um, while we believe that it should be the computer that does it for him. Okay. So yeah, the, I hope that kind of made sense, um, the, philosophical, the philosophical background. Um, yeah, the other part that we, the issues that we have, it moved too slow for us and it d didn't cover a lot of ground that we wanted it to cover. It didn't cover socket activation, like specific features. And um, um, like the, the upstairs guys were not open, still aren't really open to that idea that the socket activation is something interesting. I mean, socket activation is some, some awesome feature <laughs> of System D. So how many people are actually working actually on system day? How many people are contributing at the um, So uh, at Red Hat we have a, we have a group nowadays um, that, that focuses pretty much on exclusively on system D plus two other projects. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, so those are, are seven people now? Seven, yep. Um, I mean, they, they, they're, they're busy with lots of stuff, not just systemd upstream development, but, mm -hmm. but also doing maintenance and rel and these kind of things. Um, like most of the code nowadays is being written by, by Kai Zivas, by me, by Zbigniew, um, by uh, um, Tom Gunderson, which are like four people who do most of the work. And then there are a couple of, like there are lots of people actually contributing uh, code. Like um, we have 16 committers, um, yes. like, like we're 17 um, com people who have commit access. Um, so we try. I mean, this is another difference actually to to what's upset. We, for us, it's an like we we believe something that is as core as this is um, to to Linux operating system needs to be something that is owned by by everybody. Yes. Um, so so that we are not the ones who are in, in sole control, which is quite the opposite for Upstart, of course, because Upstart has this uh, has a copyright assignment thing, like all the legalese around it, mm -hmm. um, where which basically has the result that the only contributors to Upstart are Canonical, basically. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, I don't know. We, we we always try to to make it open, right? We will hand out commit access to people if they have shown uh, to do that, and then like the people who have commit access are from from a bunch of different companies, like there's Intel and Red Hat and, and SUSE and, and things like that. So are there several releases out there that have been run today to, to test this out, or is it still a moving target? Of how, how close is it for, for production So use? System D has been adopted and for the first time in Fedora 15. Yep. Uh, we are now at Fedora 20, so that makes uh, two and a half years. Yeah, that was the first version uh, where it was adopted as stable. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's proceeding relatively quickly. Um, uh, uh, like most of the distributions, with the exception of Canonical, like like Ubuntu and Debian, and like uh, um, uh, have it as default. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and Gentoo doesn't have it as as default, but they, they De Debian and Gentoo at least ship it as alternative. Yes. Um, actually, the Debian people are currently in the process of making the decision if they should actually sw switch by default to it. Uh, I and hope two they of the do. people who are on that committee were Vidal and uh, Keith Packard, who exactly. were discussing who it, are around think, here, yeah. through all of this. Yeah, here. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's still up there. Then, then RHEL 7 is going to include it, mm -hmm. um, like as a default and only uh, uh, supported in the system. And um, of course, all the other related things will then too, like CentOS and and SUSE um, uh, Enterprise Server and these kind of things. SUSE has adopted as well. So um, and then you can find it in like in Tizen, it's it's, it's built in there. And it basically, like like the Genevi people, like who, who built um, the 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 entertainment system for cars, they have standardized on it and things like that. So it's it's pretty universally available with a few white spots and and uh, again to where it's not the default canonical who really hate it and who, who don't have it even in the repository for uh, in, in Debian where it's currently discussed, discussed to make yeah. it the default and Slack where people of course um, uh, prefer the 1990s stuff so they're <laughs> completely opposed. So um, is this your first LCA? No, this is actually my fourth or fifth. Fourth. And what keeps you coming back to LCA? Well, so uh, the weather. Definitely. The weather, yes. <laughs> Especially if you were in North America over the last week with this polar vortex, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, I came from, from, from Berlin and it's it's certainly not as cold as in, in, in the US right now, but it's uh, not nice either. Yeah. So uh, the weather is certainly a big part of it. But I, I don't know, it's a good conference. It's a, it's a fantastic conference. Um, you're being treated well as a, as a, as a presenter and uh, it's uh, a lot of people come down here um, who I frequently see at these conferences. So, so there's a chance we'll see you again next year wherever we end up? Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, especially if it if it's in a in a, in a big city and, and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, um, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I always, I mean, I always uh, uh, look forward to coming back to Australia. And yeah, I mean, I've already spent um, a bit here on the beach. And uh, um, what do you think of the beaches? Awesome. Yeah. I mean, they 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 were they a bit windy uh, like, yeah, <laughs> yesterday. They were, but the beach is awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Right. And then, Patrick, thank you ever so much for coming along. Enjoy thank the rest you. of LCA as we finish up.